welcome to SMO TV. We're talking today to Dr. Fayla Murphy. Dr. Murphy is the clinical lead for pediatric surgery and urology at St. George's Hospital in London, specializing in undescended testes and incontinence. Hi, Dr. Murphy, how are you? Fine, thank you very much. Dr. Murphy, we're going to continue our discussion about undescended testes. So, what is an undescended testicle and what are the symptoms? Well, an undescended testes is merely a testicle that has, has stopped or gone a bit awry on route from its passage from inside the abdomen down into the scrotum itself. In reality, the vast majority of the children, these children are detected on postnatal checks or review, by review by the parents because it's very obvious to the parents that things are not symmetrical. So they don't really have an awful lot of symptoms. In, in, la, in the latter part of childhood, if the testicle becomes problematic at that stage or ascends, then the child may notice a lack of symmetry or the parent may know, notice a lack of symmetry. There can occasionally be a bit of ache and occasionally a bit of discomfort, but really very little else. How is an undescended testicle diagnosed? Well, if you have, in very simplistic terms, all men should have two testicles. They should both be symmetrical and lying at the base of the scrotum. Testicles can move, and that's a normal thing for them to happen. So it is not unusual for a testicle to retract during the cold or during a, an examination. That in itself is not pathological or problematic, in my opinion. It is testicles that are, are, do not come all the way down to the scrotum and remain there. So if on examination, the child's testicle does not, cannot be brought to the base of the scrotum and remain there, it is an undescended testicle. When is hormone therapy used for undescended testes? Yes, this is a, a very interesting question indeed. Hormone therapy is used for undescended testes. Uh, but it is a little bit controversial. It is used in different ways and in different parts of the world. It's quite common in parts of, of uh, South Germany, Poland, and Switzerland for, for um, hormonal therapy to be used. Uh, uh, but there are some arguments about it. One of the groups that's most successful in is in retractile testes and these are testes that can be brought to the base of the scrotum but move quite quickly out. Uh, one of the other groups is quite useful for is testicles that are quite palpable and near the scrotum can help bring that testicle down into the scrotum. The vast majority of surgeons still tend to do the open procedure because there are a number of concerns about whether or not that giving these hormones are really truly beneficial and there's some controversial uh, and alternative views when you look at the results about whether or not there may be uh, issues in the long term. So as such, within the British Isles, we would generally, the vast majority of centres would do this operation openly. And even without Europe, in within Europe, the vast majority would do the operation, though a small number would use hormones. We await uh, greater and larger studies to demonstrate that, it's the, that hormones would be more efficient. What is a testicular prosthesis? A uh, testicular prosthesis is basically uh, like a breast prosthesis, a large, a large bag, uh, which is testicular shape, which can be placed into the scrotum. So uh, generally they would be used in older children in order to replace the testicle that's lost. So, uh, I frequently would see parents in the first year or so of life in which the child only has one testicle and after many assessments the undescended testes that was on that was missing or impalpable is not present or if it is present it's a terrible test. So they would frequently argue, well can we not have a prosthesis for little Johnny because he'll feel left out if he doesn't have two testicles. Um, within the Western Europe we tend not to do that because first of all you you'd have to replace that prosthesis over many years and therefore turn the fact that he only has a single testicle into, into a psychological problem because poor little Johnny would have to have recurrent operations to, to help his testicle increase in size as his other one grew. So we leave usually the option open for the parents and child to return as adolescent, uh, as an adolescent if they want prosthesis. And to be very honest, these children never ever want a prosthesis when they come back. Children are very well, are very good at adapting to reality and to their own body image. And just having one testicle is not a problem for them. 
and I frequently have patients with poor boys who are dragged into clinic as teenagers to the parents demanding a prosthesis, and the child no more wants to be there or have a prosthesis than a hole in the head. So a child, a young child losing or only having one testicle is not a huge problem. An older child who loses their testicle after a trauma or a torsion will they have a different type of body image. They expect to have two testicles, so they will always go for prosthesis. If a child has had an understand a testy as a child, what does this mean later in his life in terms of testicular cancer or infertility? Are there any links? Yes, absolutely. If your testicle has, has not come down, um, there are some associated risk factors. And the biggest risk factor and the real reason that we do the surgery is that there is a potential impact on fertility. And there's a number of studies which are difficult to to kind of tease out in a short interview. But there's a number of studies that show that potentially area surgery could make a difference to long-term fertility. But in reality, if you have a single palpable testing that can be brought down, the impact upon fertility, although there is a statistical impact upon fertility, it's probably not going to make any great difference to you in your normal day-to-day -day activity, and you will be able to be fertile. Um, as regards to malignancy risk, yes, there is a malignancy risk. If your testes didn't make your way all the way down at the first go, there is a higher risk of malignancy. That malignancy risk does change if you bring it down before the age of seven, uh, and that's only relatively recent research. But in reality, it's more important that the testicle is brought down so the child or the adult can self-examine. The risk of malignancy for a child with an understanding of palpable testing that's brought down is seven times higher than the rest of the population. But the vast majority of men do not examine their testicles. It's one of these things that they just don't do. So we try and advise all our male patients uh, that they should examine their testicles. And we advise all boys who had a crypt orchid or understand the testes operation done in the past, that when they hit adolescence, they should be taught how to self-examine either by their father, their GP, or by a appropriate specialist. The risk is very, very low, but the key thing about understanding the testes, malignancies in later life, is that if detected early, the outcome is fantastic. If detected late, the outcome is poor. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Thank you so much for talking to me today. No problem. Thanks very much.